Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Art Traveller. Today, I visit one of the old firm in Hong Kong, uh, Professor Lau's office. Uh, Professor Lau he has been teaching uh, architecture in Hong Kong more than 30 years. Okay, and yes. he's here, he was the uh, KIA, uh, the former president, and also uh, a legislative council's member mm -hmm. in our industry as well. Uh, his CV is <laughs> very long. I don't think we need to cover all of them. Okay, but no. Today, we would like to focus on uh, his uh, education and the school design. You, could, you should understand that the powerhouse mm -hmm. is a very important movement mm -hmm. in, in education. So that was a time when I uh, was educated. Uh, the biggest difference I find that in uh, the uh, uh, architecture itself, okay, in both practice and education, is that the invention of the computer, mm -hmm. making drawing, uh, a, a different mode of um, uh, communication. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we know that this has been done and then a uh, computer made a big change, okay, to the, to the construction nowadays. Mm -hmm. Architectural education has changed a lot. Okay. So what we had before as a uh, education uh, focuses a lot on the foundation mm -hmm. of uh, design, okay, uh, in terms of uh, uh, drawings and uh, philosophy and all that. But I think nowadays it's more important to understand how the society change, mm. how the different uh, places. Uh, I, I, to me, it's probably more important to think about a sustainable uh, uh, architecture, sustainable development of our, uh, our community. So that architecture becomes something, okay, uh, that is actually more sustainable uh, for the future. So you have to look at how the environment changes. And this has a lot to do with how we respond to the concepts in architecture. Beginning uh, when I was teaching, I, uh, my research is very focused on the type of Hong Kong architecture that is, exists before and why are they designed like that. That I had the opportunity uh, to work on it's a Sam Tung Hok Museum. Sam Tung Hok means uh, three rows of uh, village house, actually. It's a very important project because it starts to uh, focus on the concept of uh, conservation or preservation to show the uh, uh, existing uh, environment has, has changed. Uh, so Sam Tung Hok uh, started with uh, the concept of courtyard house. Uh, it's very important to understand that the climatic condition in Hong Kong, what we need is good ventilation. So uh, a courtyard house provides a, an area in the middle so that the uh, wind and the breeze can come into it and then distribute to other parts of the uh, small house. And it's a basic concept of a courtyard that actually started all the kind of... Um, uh, rural architecture in Hong Kong. So uh, this opportunity to preserve uh, the village and made it into a museum so that people can understand what is the livelihood, how is it working for the people, uh, rural uh, people, uh, how they farm and also it's very much related okay, to this kind of uh, housing concept. A French uh, client came to me and asked me to look at their version of a French school in Hong Kong. The French government, because of the well, uh, number of uh, French people that actually working on business uh, in Hong Kong, they require a school okay, of their own education, uh, their own uh, education uh, philosophy uh, for their schools, for their children. So we, s we started to work on this uh, French international school with a new uh, concept that fits their education philosophy. And also, of the, uh, there was a, a French dream and an English dream for the school. And the site was very interesting because this is in Jardin Slo out and it's a, a residential site. So there is a number of restrictions that we cannot build so, so high and so on. So it's a, a four-story restriction uh, for the schools. And this is how I started with the French International School. The site has a lot of difficulty because first of all, it's very small and it has a lot of 
uh, in mature trees and uh, there is a condition where the drainage uh, has to flow into the site, in mm -hmm. between the site and you can uh, build uh, the, the, the building has to be separated so that the uh, allow in the center a drainage reserve okay, mm -hmm. for this particular school. Uh, the English School Foundation has a very uh, interesting uh, school philosophy and at that time they are developing their education mode and uh, as you know the uh, American uh, system of education is very free but the British is more conservative but they actually uh, cater towards uh, American style of education as well so that the school itself uh, has a lot of uh, sports facilities and a lot of facilities that are catered for the activity of the uh, school. The interesting part of because of the difficulty of the site, so the school itself is connected by a bridge in two parts and there is a lot of uh, facilities that we cater for at different levels. Uh, one of my uh, idea of um, building a school in Hong Kong is the how to use the roofs okay, for sports activities and other play area uh, or open area for the school, which is important, I think, because you don't have much uh, actually open space huh, for sports activity and so forth. So the school itself is a very complex, almost like a jigsaw puzzle to put it together, uh, connected by the bridge. Most schools in Hong Kong are only because of the fire services uh, restrictions and you only maximum use seven stories. But for um, higher education, that there is no such restriction, so we can go higher. And for this uh, uh, Hong Kong University uh, Sp Space Community College, we had a site in Kowloon Bay, which is very small. It forces the building to go vertical and it has a lot of classrooms. So the concept is that the classrooms are a cluster around a vertical courtyard. The vertical courtyard provides good circulation of air because of the hot air rises and it has a convection, okay? It allows the uh, vertical uh, school to have good ventilation okay, for all the areas surrounding it, besides uh, classrooms and all the uh, students' activity areas are within this uh, courtyard, vertical courtyard uh, complex and makes it a very different, different mode of design, okay, which is cater to the climatic condition of Hong Kong. Uh, this is in the Sha Tin uh, IV uh, need to expand and in the beginning they may not have foresee the increase of students or increase of the curriculum. So uh, this particular school in Sha Tin has a large courtyard where we place the addition inside the courtyard. There's a lot of limitation. We cannot have very heavy foundations. So our foundations are very light and the school itself, okay, and the building itself is prefabricated in steel and glass. But the courtyard itself has a lot of mature trees already. So we have kept all the trees. We didn't even cut down any one tree. But the site itself has to work around the tree. So our placement of the building is actually where there is no uh, vegetation, no, no trees. Okay, huh? And then the trees itself becomes a, a shield. Okay? It's like a sunshade okay? for all these uh, buildings that were made of glass and steel. As we know, okay, it has been said okay, that Hong Kong has a scarcity of land. Mm -hmm. okay? But actually it's not true. We, we know that uh, the whole of Lan Tao is very much undeveloped. Mm -hmm. So what we should do is look at our present situation and see what we can actually uh, using architecture as a means to cater for this problem. Uh, we can see that a lot of uh, uh, successful examples in Hong Kong are in this vertical architecture. It's a high rise, okay, huh? already established a mode of buildings, okay, that are uh, because of the mass transit and uh, the traffic and so forth, able to connect with a vertical city. 
So we must be able to look at okay, the, 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 the land we have left over, which are probably uh, brownfield sites, industrial sites. Uh, we have to uh, use our town planning, okay, our planning concept to develop a new city. Small house policy. All the buildings are only three stories. We must be able to actually rebuild them uh, in a vertical form so that you can have saved a lot of much more land okay, for future uses. I think it's important that uh, we look at areas which are restricted by the height because of the airport before. And, uh, and of course, uh, the mass transit already well developed. And we can actually look at the future city as a, a metropolis with vertical with verticality to cater for the need for the density and also because of um, sustainability, because of new uh, methods in technology, we can actually connect them together in a much more cohesive form. So this probably will be the future of uh, Hong Kong.